In this video, you're gonna to get to go along with me on a trip to Dupuyer, Montana, the grizzly bear capital of the world, in my opinion. See how a rancher deals with his family being right in the middle of grizzly bears every single day, right on his back porch, basically. We're gonna to get to move cows, learn some ranching techniques, and also what ranchers think about the wolves and the bears and how to deal with them. We're, you're gonna get a lot of insight into horses and cattle and the grizzly bear and wildlife issue that all work together in Montana. As well as I accidentally fell in a bog and also finding out how his wife deals with having to drive two hours just to get groceries. Make sure you leave a comment at the very end to tell me what you think of this video. It's a quarter after four, I'm gonna go catch Calabar. It's always interesting catching a black horse in the dark because it's kind of hard to see him. Oh, bud. Oh, buddy. Oh, there, buddy. Oh, there you go, buddy boy. How you doing? Just had a, I just had a wreck. Bulls busted the fence down and mixed two bunches of cows we spent all day yesterday sorting. Fantastic. Yeah. Ranching in grizzly country can be very daunting in many ways. It comes with a whole lot, whole lot of challenges, that some of which you can definitely imagine and some that you can't. So today we're up here near Shoto, Montana, actually near Depuyer, on a ranch that is really designed and owned by the Boone and Crockett Club. And what their goal is with this ranch is really to show and educate people about how conservation and hunting and taking care of the land all go hand in hand. And it's something they're doing, I think, a very good job of. They're doing classes, they have seminars that you can come up here and uh, your kids can learn about nature at the same time as they're learning about ranching and how they work together. So first I'm gonna uh, saddle up Calabar, he's here and uh, get him soaking underneath the saddle so we're ready to ride. So this was not the plan, so. We've got to get these cattle sorted out, and I've got to take a guy to an airport. I leave it here too. Oh. So we'll just see how we do. Sure. Yeah. You know, the plan was everything all sorted, and then we just trail cows this morning. But, Ranching is never plan. exactly how you. <laughs> right. Yeah. You, you like you can make a plan, <laughs> but you better be prepared for it not to be a plan, right? Yeah. Well, you know, hormones and lust and sex cause all kinds of problems. Oh, it sure does. World. It's no different in the animal world, too. So. Well, and apparently the grass is always greener on the other side of the, pit, the fence because they're in with cows. Well, right? we had we had the old cows settle settle last night out here. Oh, I see. And the young cows that we don't want to be bred by their fathers. Right. <laughs> and the fathers are out there. Uh, we have a new set of bulls for this. They were in this pen. I with see. a good wood fence between them, and we thought that would hold them through the night, and it did till about uh, 15 minutes before you pulled up. So. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing, yeah, huh? Yeah. So, Almost got it. So to prevent any incest, we better go throw a leg over and get these cows served up. So. Okay. <laughs> so if you can keep the cattle from circling back around here, uh, that would be awesome. Yeah. I'll go around through that brush. And then mm -hmm. I think they'll go out of here pretty easy. It's probably getting the trail that we're gonna have. Right. And when you're moving cows through this brush, you, them dogs are going to be really handy. The dogs help out a bunch because they, they're able to go through that brush. Shove them over towards the gate just a little bit. Yep, yep. And then stop. Wait for them to go over. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> wrong way, Cap. You got to consider that calves don't really know what gates are so they have to you have to be very careful you don't push them the wrong direction just hang 
tight left and go all the way around the circle. We're going to bring him on the other side. And bring him in the right here? Okay. Okay, so we're going to circle around here through this brush and come out the other side and put him back where we just came through, basically. Cows, hip, hip, hey, cows, hip. Hey, cow, hip, hip, hey. Hey. Hip, hip, hey, 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 hey. You can see the cows going now. They're going right down to the gate. He's going to go make sure that they go the right way and don't turn off this direction. Hey, dog. When you got them through, go through a tight area like that, you don't want to push up on them too hard because they'll try to all go through there at once and break something. pressure on a horse when they all circle back around to you, huh? We'll be sorting on foot, because sorting on horseback can be tough unless you're doing it in a pasture that's kind of got the right, the right setup for it. So we're going to sort the stuff off that, uh, Sort the cows off that got into the wrong pen here. They're going down the alleyway down there, but it's pretty tight, so we don't want to push them very hard. You just kind of let them, let them go. The plan was we were going to move some cows up to a pasture, but um, to, to today. But since they mixed, now we're going to have to sort them back off. So you want to keep, a lot of times you'll keep the, the different ages of cows in different groups for the summer. So they're keeping the younger ones away from the older ones, apart from the older ones. It, it, they, the younger ones can go in, in pastures that are a little bit harder to get around. They'll travel a little more. They'll, they'll hike up to the top of a mountain quicker. So the old ones you want to put in the flatter pastures, the ones that are easy to get around. I'm not sure what ages they run here, but... We'll find out. Hey, 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 yep. Hey, 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 hey. Yep, 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 yep. Yo. Want me to go with you or him? I uh, will just pause right here. I'll just shut this alley. Gotcha. So what I'm doing here is putting hobbles on him. I carry these around my saddle and what that does is tie the two front feet together. That way they can't really run away and get away, but they can graze around by hopping their front feet around. him graze a little bit since he didn't get anything to eat this morning otherwise he'll be bugging me trying to pull his face all the time to get to something to eat while we're riding if we get that far 
grizzly bears, this isn't grizzly bear country. Grizzly bears are, they're like show up when you don't want them to. But when, if you go look for them, they're really difficult to find in the wild. So we had some friends brought their uh, daughter and family all the way from Pennsylvania out just to show them a grizzly bear. Oh my goodness, that's pressure. It puts a lot of pressure on me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we were leaving the house and I'm like, look, the odds of us just driving out and seeing a bear are pretty slim. So don't bank on it. And we hadn't been two miles and a bear, bear with salves comes and just walks r r kind of right alongside of us along the road, just matches pace for pace. And her little kids are <laughs> up against the window and it was about from here to your horse <laughs> off the side of the road. I couldn't have done that again no. in a thousand years for a million dollars. Exactly. <laughs> that those that's the way you want it to happen, but right, it doesn't yeah. happen doesn't very happen often that way. way. No. But you know, I'm amazed because like wolves and stuff, dogs are yeah, that's kind of on good. the menu. Yeah. So grizzly bears just are a little bit not as quick or too slow. Yeah. Too slow. Yeah, a dog can whip a bear every time. And these dogs are are made they're bred to for moving cows, so they nip the heel and they're oh, yeah. they're quicker than unbelievably quick so uh not this spring but last spring it got cold at night and my wife felt sorry for the dogs and she brought them in <laughs> and that's the only bear track i found in the yard and i found it right over there in a mud puddle i see you know yeah the, the, the night the dogs weren't here the bears went right through the yard but as long as the dogs are out uh we don't worry about the bears much in the yard and that's we because they're good because sorry. there's an insane amount of choke cherries i in see the yard in the fall yeah, yeah. And you don't want them in the yard just because you got feed and kids. Kids, yeah, little kids and everything. Yeah, bears don't have any natural predators, so they they don't have any fear of any natural fear of humans anymore because we don't hunt them. So it's so, gonna be very difficult. Yeah, and uh, without dogs, I wouldn't ranch here. Really? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Yeah. yeah. So it, dogs are good. imperative when you're ranching in in grizzly country because yeah. you're. I mean, you went. We went through some of this brushy stuff. Oh yeah. You know you're. You're a lot of times you're in really close quarters. Oh yeah, and that's where they like to hang out. Oh yeah, that's where you get in trouble with the with the bears is in the brush. Out in the open, you don't hardly ever have a problem with the bear. Uh, right. You'll have a problem getting close enough to take a decent picture. Right. But in the brush, yeah, that's what, and that's where they'll be the most aggressive. Cause you start them, you jump them. But 95 percent of the bears, they don't cause any problems. They're they're way too lazy. <laughs> right, they're looking for a free handout, and you know. and mostly the males don't bother anything anyway, except for the young ones, I guess. But well, a, a male will he'll kill the other cubs. That's the that's the predator in the bear world. I see. They kill the cubs, and the sow will come and eat. And so, yeah, it's not like Brother Bear on Disney. No, no, it's not like that. It's not like that. This is the real world we're talking about here. So a, a sow this time of year, especially with young cubs, yeah. Uh, a majority of her time will be spent just avoiding boars, just trying to get away, and keep her cubs away and keep them safe. So a lot of times you'll see the boars in the creek bottoms and the brush, and you'll see the sows spread out more where it's open. I see. No, no. Trying to stay away yeah. from those areas. So we see a lot more sows and cubs. Um, and it's, yeah, that's just kind of the, the natural world that they live in. Yeah. <laughs> well, and... And I think the the sows with clubs, cubs though do become tend to be what people run into sometimes because yeah. as far as confrontation because they're always on the lookout they're protecting their cubs they're more more aware and protective of their little area too right yeah for sure yeah you're not as talkative as your dad yeah or or your uncle or his kids. Yeah, <laughs> We number our number tag all our cattle, mm -hmm. so we know by the first two numbers in the tag what year they were born. So anything that's 20 or 21, cow or calf, is two or three years old, needs to go this way because we don't want sires breeding daughters. Gotcha. And then everything that's older than that, there's no risk, so they'll go out this way. Okay. So that's what we're doing. So. Um, mm -hmm. If you'll just kind of stand here for a little bit till we get some some pressure off and just be our backup, we holler at you, just stop everything. Yeah, stop anything. Yeah. Got it. And 
everything, most everything that's coming your way is going to go by. We'll let you know. Okay. So probably like maybe right in there. Occasionally one cow gets in the wrong pen when you're sorting. And that's what happened here. So we're going to just sort her back off. <clears throat> When you're helping a rancher sort cows and calves or bulls or anything, you have to understand that they're starting out from a place that they don't trust that you know what you're doing. You can't trust that they know what they're doing. If you didn't grow up in cows and ranching and everything, or you have a real, real ability to learn and want to learn, you're not, you're not going to be any help sorting. You're going to be in the way. So when they start out, they put me in the back. And then after that, um, after they could see that I did know a little bit about what I was doing. I'm not an expert or anything. Then I started getting more and more up towards in the action. And it, it with the three of us, we figured out a way finally that that actually worked really fast and got this sorting thing done in record time. What I'm doing here is when you get a gap between the herd and the gate, a lot of times he'll sort some off that have to go through the gate, but they'll just stop. And so he can't sort anything else off that goes the other direction because they're standing behind him. So when he sorts them off, then I move them, make sure that, that those cows or calves go through the gate they're supposed to go through, past the, the gate, and then he can sort off, he can just pay attention to sorting, and not have to worry whether the cows and calves that are behind him are actually moving to where they need to go. That's in. Yep, I see it. This gate here, is he talking about, or that one? Yeah. <laughs> Cows are very interesting creatures because, like, he's pushing them down the alleyway. If we if us two were to stand out there, then then the direct line of sight is you. Makes him not want to go. So we're kind of standing behind this post here. Makes you a little bit out of their line of sight. Makes a huge difference. It's amazing. And pressure to a cow is just, just me looking at it. So, or being in the way or anything. So where you're facing is even important. You can get up next to a fence, but try to face away or angled away. For some reason, just the pressure of me facing them directly can have an effect on whether they go past me or not. Except for the one that you don't want to go past you, and then they'll go past you regardless of whether you're facing them or not. So this, it works 80% of the time. <laughs> Got it? You're pretty clean of foot. Occasionally. Is that that same cow? Uh, that's wrong cow. Dang it. I thought it was the same one we were just I, I completely missed it. I saw it. Just a glimpse of it. It was 18. All right, Reed. Well, I, your secondary kind of screwed up too, because I, I was like, I don't think, so, but anyway, I didn't jump in there. And you see there, there's a calf here now that doesn't belong in this pen. And you cannot leave that because 
because his mom is going to end up in the other pen. So. It is much easier to sort a calf off in a very tight area. So when you're trying to sort a calf off in a pen like this, a bigger one, it's really We're difficult to just take the calf. So we're just going to take this little group in and then sort the calf back off. Much easier. That one right there. Look at that. Yep. Perfect. Watch behind you. You might as well go that way now. Whoa. You wild little sucker. That direction. <laughs> okay, I'll pay more attention this time. I'll do better. Sometimes you just need to get them kind of turned around going the other way and it's easy, easier to sort them if they want to go your direction. After a while we figured out that if I got in on the other end of them and just kept them pushed up to him so they kept flowing past, it worked far better and far faster than me chasing them after he had sorted them. Fifteen hundred, he's by. All right, that worked pretty good. Yeah. You want to just let that next pan in? Sure. Not all of them, right? About half of them are. Hip, 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 hip. Hip, 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 hip. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, boys. Hip, hip, hip. Hey, girls. Hip. Hip, 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 hip. Hey, 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 hey. Hip, 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 hip. Hip, hip, hip. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey cows, hold up. Then as soon as they start moving that way, then I want I back off. You just kind of want to want them to flow past him when you're doing this, but not push him. <clears throat> kind of get their direction and their mind changed to this direction. And then they're all turned this way, so I'm going to push them that way just a little bit. Hip, hip, hip. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, cows, hip. Hey, cows, hey, cows. And then I'm going to turn, turn back around because they're headed that way. Oh. 
If they're coming at him too fast, he won't be able to do anything with himself. Hey! Hey! Bull is going to go regardless, but... Okay, cows. Okay, cows. Okay, cows. The other direction. Hip, hip, hip. Hip, hip, hip. The last couple are the ones that don't want to pass a human, so... First, that last one. <laughs> yep, he's got to be difficult. There he goes. Knowing how much to push cows and how much pressure to leave off of them is definitely something that you just learn how to do. And every cow is different. All cows are different. Hip, hip, hip. Some herds of cows are really, really spooky. Hip, hip. So. <clears throat> and so it, it doesn't take as much pressure to move them some cows some herds of cows are, are pretty gentle they're they're docile and they move around pretty good I'll back off here because they're pushing him pretty hard now so i don't want to push them at all but you just kind of learn this like just a little pressure once they start moving just a little bit you back off because they're going to move a lot further than that if you keep pushing them once they start moving and then back off, sometimes it's too late and they're going too fast. This is what they call a smoky calf right here. It's kind of a really cool color. It's kind of like a like like a, like a deer color, but it's it's got a little little brown, more brown to it. So that's what they call smoky definitely got some charlet or something in there right now I'm just making myself a human fence you can kind of see the bubble like when I get a little closer that's their then I back off and the bubble is just right there <coughs> So then the bubble is like right here. So it's it's not touching them. My bubble is not touching them. Right. But as soon as I move forward a little bye, bit, bye, it is. That's bye. So this is the pen's empty. This is the last little bunch we have to sort. But uh, man, they. They really did get screwed up. It was, they were mixed about half and half. <laughs> so what happened to them when the bull knocked the fence down, then a bunch of those cows got into here. Reed did let one cow go by and we were teasing him that it was because he was thinking about his girlfriend. Hey, cow, hey, cow, hey, cow. Hey. There you go, girl. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna say you're, you know, thinking about something else, but I'm sure you weren't, right? I got, I got her. The gig, I got the gig. Oh. Love the gig. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Might be a little extra hard, but. <laughs> all right, all we got these little calves left. And... 
We should be sorted. Easy, calves. You don't want to push them very hard when they're going up against a the gator. They'll jump right through there. These are both by over here. Okay. They're all by. They're all by? Yep. Okay. Works for me. Hey, Caddy. There you go. Time. There you go. <laughs> you, you thought you were done sorting them yesterday, right? Yes. Yeah. So when he's saying by and in, what do you mean? Just go by, straight down the alleyway, or in, to pen. It's, it's uh, typically how they call it out, right? Uh, I'm not sure when that started, but it was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> I, long before I was born. All my life. So my parents sold out of the ranching business when I was pretty young. And 30 years after Dad was working cows, he was still yelling at Mom, in and by in his sleep. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, this, you know, I don't know if it's just me around or are you normally this jovial and oh yeah nice when you're doing <laughs> I've been, you know, there's a lot of ranch sortings that don't go quite as smooth. Or, I mean, I just have fun. So, yeah. But... Sometimes the rancher gets a little stressed when things like that happen. If you let this guy this stuff stretch you, you're not going to have a very good life. <laughs> no, you're always going to be miserable. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you always have a choice. Yeah, yeah. No, it's against the... We holler at each other just because we can't hear over the cows. Exactly. But we don't holler at each other because we're mad. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. buddy. Huh? I'm going to send Reed with you to clear these two pastures. They're pretty small. Sure. I'm going to jump on a side by side and go set the gate so we can still trail as much as cows. Sounds good. Now that we're sorted, we're going to move these cows, but there is okay. other cattle in the field that we're going through to get to where we're going. So Reed and I are going to go push those cows out of the way so that we don't have to resort everything again <laughs> after we go through this pasture. When you first take hobbles off, they still think they're hobbled for just a second, so they have to test it. <laughs> I've got to figure it out for a second. I, what? I can walk again. Whoa. I don't, I don't see any cows at all. Is there a cow there? Do you see a cow? Huh? Yep, 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 yep. Now if a grizzly bear comes busting out of here, <laughs> I'm not really sure what this horse would do, but all I gotta do is stay on, right? Hey, cows, hip! There's one. Hey, cow, hip, 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 hip! Wrong way. Hey, cows, hey, cows, hey, cows, hey, cows, hey, cows! There she, there she goes. She goes the right way. Hip, 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 hip! Hip, hip! Hey! Hey, cow, hip, hip, hip! Hey! You know, when you're in grizzly country, this is the kind of stuff that you have to really worry about because you're right. You're, I mean, if you come up on a grizzly bear, you're right in on it. This is very close, and there's a fence right here, so it's not like I have anywhere to go. <laughs> My horse doesn't either. Hey cows, hip, 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 hip. Such a contrast. Last year, this was like burnt up brown. Wasn't hardly any grass anywhere. Look at the grass down here in the bottom. I mean, unreal. Stir pie. As a cowboy would say, to a tall horse, which this is a tall, pretty tall horse, so. I thought he might be thirsty, but he doesn't look like he's really wanting to drink that much. 
no, he's not thirsty. He's just dinking around. <laughs> he's just playing around. Dude, so do you do you hunt around here at all, or? Yeah. Did you bear hunt this spring? No, I didn't. I don't have money enough. To, I did shoot one to get it. Yeah, I know. Because basically, really, what you really want when you go bear hunting, and we're talking about black bears, yeah. is the the rug. So you got to kind of be able to afford the rug, or at least a tanned hide. Yeah. Is there a lot of black bears around here, or there's the grizzlies? Or did the grizzly kind of run them out? The grizzlies kind of run them out, but this last summer we saw quite a few around. Oh yeah? You know, the, them grizzlies will eat them. Yep. They do over on, they ate several of them over there on the Teton River. Kind of thins them out a little bit. So how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have two brothers and one sister. Oh, okay. All older. Yep. You're the youngest one, huh? Yep. What do they do? Um, so my sister, she's the oldest. Uh, she's working in Conrad. Uh, she works at the school, and then in the summer, she works at a restaurant there, and then... Which restaurant? Uh, that little drive-in. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. The Tasty Freeze? It used to be the Tasty Freeze. Yeah. I don't know what it is now, but... It's the drive-in now. Oh, okay. And then my oldest brother, he runs a ranch down in Shoto. Oh. And we have some cows down there. Uh -huh. The road that takes us to the Ed Center, we're going to go through that gate. And you and I will sit back on the back and swap flies. Uh -huh. And Reed will give some direction. We're going to go through that big saddle and into our shooting range patch. And we'll meet them up there and then okay. through a gate. So. Okay. Sounds good. So we're going back down this road then, and then up the gate on the hill, uh, on the no, on that road or the gate. Yeah, we'll turn them. Yeah, we'll turn. Yeah. Up to a different gate over there. Red gates or the other gate? No, not the red gates. We'll go by our house, up the new fence, between the members' house and the home place, and then we'll go through the gate, the cattle guard going into the Ed Center, and then you know. All right. You're in charge of steering the ship. Uh, Penny and I, we're down in the hold. We're running the motor. That's right. <laughs> you mean ranchers don't just ride horses all year? They they have to actually work, too? <laughs> Building fence. Watch Yellowstone. They go to town and raise a lot of hell. Exactly. Every, every night, right? <laughs> well, I've never watched it, but I hear things. Yep. Hey, cattle. <laughs> Calabar. Move these cows a little ways. Huh? Can we move them? Don't smash my leg. Against the, it's a little soft spot, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> hey cows. Hip, hip, hip. Hey, cattle. Hip, hip. Hey. Hip, hip. Hip, hip, hip. Hey. Looking at the dog instead of going the right way. He's, he's going to try to pinch him. What we call pinching them. He's going to put a little pressure so they don't try to go all through the gate at once and knock the knock the post over which they dang sure will do if you're not watching <laughs> get all the calves oh good we're starting out with the calves right in the back the reason you don't want the calves in the back is because 
if they think their mom is behind you back oh, yeah. at the ranch, they'll try to get around you and go back there, which always oh, yeah. causes problems. I think our industry yeah. keeps breeding the mothering out of these cows. My my friend Corey says the same thing, and he, he actually started writing down every year when he's calving, when he gets one that's not a good mother, and kind of culling them out. And he's getting getting better mothers. I mean, some of them are a little fiery when you go to tag a calf, but they'll at least stay with their calf. Some of them cows, man, they just don't even... Do I need to go this way or... Yeah. It's starting out, starting out pretty fast. Something I always keep in my saddlebags for a snack is called the Wag Bar. It's a company that I have been associated with for a little while. They are Wagyu beef bars, American Wagyu, which is known for the amazing marbling and flavor of incredible beef. You can get a Wagyu beef bar like this, or comes in a bag of bite-sized chunks of American Wagyu beef. These are so amazing. Super good flavor, lots of protein. Lots of fat content. Really love these things. If you want to get 10% off of Wag Bar, go right down below. I'll leave a link. And you can use my code TRINITY10, all caps, one word, to get 10% off on the website, mywagbar.com. Now back to Dupuyer, Montana. Mmm. I'm going to eat the rest of all this stuff. What do you call these uh, pines that grow on, the, like scrubby pines? I call them scrub pines, but I don't even know if that's right. They're just... Limber pines. Huh? Limber pines. Limber. Okay. They always look like they're windblown and... They are. <laughs> they're double cups. Yeah. The wind will rip them out of the ground around here, blow them into piles or in the fences. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you guys don't get any wind, do you? I mean, at least not every day, right? Yeah. This this is perfect. I mean, I don't... Yeah, the wind doesn't blow all the time, but when it does, it does, it does in a big way. Yeah, it blows 90 miles an hour here fairly often. Yeah. <laughs> it always well, moves. Well, the dogs will do most work. Most of That's time. right. And then what, what kind of dogs are these that you got here? That's a healer from the <laughs> A heater, a heater, what? Okay. Needs a little charging today because these are the first cows. Re yeah. Yeah. Yep. Back. Back. Back up. Well, at least he's aggressive enough when they come at him. Yeah. Nothing, nothing that you are like. Re well, obviously you're in favor of the border collie crosses, huh? Yeah, purebred border collie, they drive me crazy. <laughs> they're, they're a little timid. Yeah. And then they try to run around in front of the herd a lot. Yeah. What I've they, found. They quit you a lot, too. Oh, they'll quit you, too, huh? Yeah, the ones I've been around, I really like the cross. The cross tends, like a healer cross, tends to take, the healers are so, so aggressive. Yeah. You're yeah. trying to take some of that aggressive out of there a little bit, huh? Yeah. The border collie had some brain. Yep. Australian Shepherd, we really like the Australian Shepherd mix. Oh, okay. They seem to be pretty good temperament. So is that is that local weed right there? No. No, we don't have any. It kind of looks like it. I'm not sure what that the name of that is. So do you do you tend to lose any to bears and um the only run back that I know of that we lost was the wolves. Oh yeah? Yeah. Right here is the is the Boone and Crockett like visitor center kind of a thing so that they put on like clinics and teach people about uh, all the wildlife that's around here in the and in the Bob Marshall and stuff. 
is definitely some absolutely gorgeous country here. Grass everywhere and these limber pines like this. He said they're limber pines. I always call them scrub pines, but limber pines. And then the big Rocky Mountain front over there. Hey, Cal. You don't, I don't have to do a whole lot though because the dogs are taking care of it. <laughs> I think they're not supposed to be going down there, they're supposed to be going up there. <laughs> So hopefully they're turning them. Nope, they're headed right to the bottom. Yeah, they want to try to go try to go right down the creek. Yep, 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 yep. Hey, cattle hip. <coughs> Hey, cow, hip! Hey, cow, hip! Hips! Hey, hey! Hey, cows, hips! Hip, hip, hip! Hey! Hey, cows, hip, 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 hip! Hey, hey, hey! You do not want them down in that stuff. You can help it. Hey, cows, hey, cows, hip, hip! Hey, cows, hip! Hey, cows, hey, hey, hey! Oh, sure enough, there's a bear. It's hard to see because my camera is such a wide angle. It's It seems like it's in the distance, but this bear is only 150 to 200 yards away. Right there. You guys probably can't see it in the camera, but it's right behind him right now, Mike. It's a grizzly bear, too. Bears really like to bed in this kind of stuff. So do, so do deer, but... Hip, 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 hey! Hey, 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 hey! Did he go into this into these trees here? I see. The, the cows can smell the bear that was right. He was right on this road here, and he went up right over there. And the dog's trying to roll in his scent. Probably right up in this stuff here. Yep, yep, yep. Yo, ho, 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 ho. Yep. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Hey, hey. Cattle, hip, 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 hip. Hey. Hey. Yo. Hey. Ah. Ah. Hey. Okay. Go. Come on, go check that bear. Yeah, apparently. Hey, hey cows, hey cows, hey cows, hey cows, hey cows, hip. Yeah, hey! So they can smell him because he was right here. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. 
There's mesh stuff. Is it up in the grass too? Okay. I see. Hip, 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 hip. Hey. 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 Did you see how you were standing up? Yeah. Because they can't see. You're trying to get a look at something, huh? Okay. Trying to get some smell, huh? Yeah. Nine times out of ten when a bear stands up, they're not being aggressive. They're they're trying to get a whiff they or something. Are, yeah. Yep. It's when they stand up and they drop really fast, then you're in trouble. And that brand is a T T bar D stands for triple divide. Gotcha. And that when the Connors brothers put all the old, they bought out all the old homesteads that were going belly up way back in like the 30s and 40s. Uh huh. Uh, that was their brand, stood for Triple Divide, because of the triple forks of the Dupuyer Creek that come together on the, the confluence is on the ranch. Okay, it is. Yeah, so okay. that's why. North, south, yeah. and middle fork. But then the Theodore Roosevelt Memorial Ranch, it works for Teddy. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> works for Teddy at the same time, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, I live with that all the time here. The the reimbursement deal? Yeah, you know, back in the day when like the defenders of wildlife were really excited about all this. Yeah, exactly. Money. First new. Yeah, there was yeah. money. So, yeah, it wasn't hard to get a reimbursement. But now all those funds are dried up and they're on to something else. And Yeah, they're back in. Now we're stuck in the problem. Yep, they're back in. Uh, the people that put all the wolves here and everything and then are supposedly compensating everybody, they're back litigating for something else. So they're trying to get the wolves now in Colorado. It has nothing to do with wolves. That's nothing to do with bears. Nope. It has to do with lawyers making a lot of money. You're darn right. Follow the money. All right. It's about to get lively when they bail off of there. Sounds good. Some of the most beautiful country in the world, that's for sure. Talk about ranching in, in heaven. Keep getting out in front of them so they turn the right direction. Calves are staying with them pretty good. That's good. So how long you been working here? 13 years this week. Oh really, that long? There's so many people that think they want this lifestyle. You know, live out here work and ranch and everything and most of them don't actually if they if they really did it because you know right today is like the perfect day it's like beautiful oh, yeah, yeah. no wind horses are acting good cows are doing well you know so on days like this you go absolutely this is it you know yeah. but there's 99 days before this one <laughs> Where, where it's still beautiful, but you're either, you know, locked in a house because it's 20 below zero and blowing snow and it's hard to get to town. And, you know, how long do you guys, how how uh, far do you got to go for groceries? Um, the closest is 40 miles. 40? Just a little mom and pop. Where's that? Valier. In, that's in Valier? Yeah, Valier. So that's the closest yeah, one. And then Conrad's got, we're... We're late in the middle of nowhere. We're 50 miles from any town, basically inside Hoosier. They started out with two homesteads, eight milk cows, and my great great granddad went in debt to buy the wedding ring, Mary Grandma, and he promised himself he'd never go in debt after that. So when the depression hit, he had money. 
and uh, no, and everybody else had debt. And so he was either buying from the his neighbors or buying from the bank, but he was buying, you know, you know, ten cents on the dollar. Yep. For what, you know? And when he come through the depression, he they didn't have a dollar left, but they had a big ranch. Right. And then that just kept building and building. And when he died, he had the fourth largest family-owned ranch in the state of Montana. Hmm. Yeah. But he he was just like that his whole entire life. He he hated debt, you know. And they worked hard and they just reinvest their money, in more land, more livestock. Well, that's how my wife's family got started too. Is during the during the depression. If you had money, nobody else really had any. So the cash was worth a lot as far as land went. Some of it they bought for a dollar an acre. That east or that bench uh, between Dillon and Coon Bridges. Yeah. Uh, old Les Stoudemire, he bought a lot of that country up for a nickel an acre. A nickel an acre. And you know, back then it wasn't worth a lot because there was no irrigation. Oh, exactly. And after they made the irrigation district, man, he was sitting there. Then it was worth a bunch, yeah. A lot of times when I'm moving cows out of the mountains and stuff, it's kind of a, like, you got to get to where you're going. You don't have, because it takes about all day long. But most of the time, if you can get cows kind of moving and then let them move on their own, you're far better off than just pushing them hard. You push them hard. A lot of times they just start balking at you. He's saying, what he said was, if you see that circle right there, of ground right there, that's that's like a bottomless mud hole. So if there, it's like quicksand, basically. You, If you step in it, your horse will just sink right up to his belly. I've stepped in one with a horse before, and all of a sudden I was standing on the ground. My, my two feet were standing on the ground, one on each side of the horse. So you gotta watch those so you don't sink out of sight. Hmm. Sheesh. Watch out. Just like that. <laughs> See this mud? He sunk all the way down. Well, I did too. Let's go over there. How about? Yeah, I thought I could make it right across that thing, but apparently not. Oh. oh. I just thought I'd demonstrate that for you. For some stupid reason. Look at that black mud. <laughs> that stuff is totally just like it, it's just so soft. They just sink right down in it. So we're going to try this again. there yep get over there probably gonna jump it there you go <laughs> he didn't want to try that again you want to fall in that thing again there you I just wanted to demonstrate, you know, what you were talking about. Yeah. So I thought, you know, I'll just, I'll just make sure that they understand what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, he just sunk all the way down until I was standing on the ground. I was just saying I had done that before. Oh yeah. Standing on the ground, and then he just sunk right to the ground. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. Poor guy. A lot of this country's all right, but they get these soap poles, and and you'll lose a horse, the bigger ones. Oh yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, they're kind of like a really thick, a really thick quicksand kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. I've hit one back in the Bob Marshall Wilderness. Oh no, that's not a good place to do that. No. <laughs> My horse was stuck right, it looked like this nice, beautiful little meadow out in yeah. the middle of a bunch of trees. And I rode right out in the middle of it and it bunk oh, right yeah. to the, right to the bottom. That is a terrible feeling. Yep. All the, the, the good earth just disappears on you. <laughs> Old cowboy friend of mine, he lost his horse in it. All he saved was his saddle. He was lucky to save his life, but he saved his saddle. Oh. The horse went down, he lost his buff. Yeah. Wow. By himself, couldn't do anything. No, not, well, I, you know, I had to hike out. This, I told you that, though, didn't I? Broke a, this horse broke my rib. Oh. Bucked me off on top of a mountain. Oh. <laughs> and I had to hike out four miles with a broken rib. <laughs> yeah, you like that? Yeah. Fashionable footwear. Yeah. yeah. Just making sure, just breaking them boots in, you know? Let's make sure it's not a trend with red. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. We'll let you be the trend setter. That's right. Admire. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to get this horse used to everything. That's, you know, my excuse. You're never sure, you know, like when to get off when they're down there. Cause you're like, as soon as I start coming back over, he's gonna lunge, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I said it was good to see that he came out on the top. Side. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to come out on the bottom side. Nope. This is an old corral. Some old corrals in here. Oh, that's an old wagon. Oh, that's an old wagon. Yeah, oh yeah, the frame. Yep. This was all part of that old ranch yard, so it might be. Like oh, I see. And it's amazing because people, that means that somebody up here was, well, they probably weren't farming too much. They were just haying, I suppose, but uh, cutting hay on this for, for the winter. And somebody, somebody attempted to make a go of it back in the day. And there's the remnants of it right there. <laughs> they, this outfit made it quite a way. Did they? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they did okay. A lot of the other ones went belly up pretty fast. Okay. Old foundation of the house is right there. It's about 25 more years. You'll never even know that was there. Somebody gave their life up. Yeah, they did. They. I think they probably had a good life. I'm sure they did. It's always interesting to think about the fact that when somebody pours their life into something for their whole life and they 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 build something up yeah. and then you see it sitting here, it you know, nothing lasts. No. Nothing here lasts. Right? Right. Yeah. There's more important things. There's more important things and I mean we we love to enjoy this stuff, but I think it maybe even makes it more enjoyable when we consider how temporary it is. Right, and we're not. This isn't all there is. Relationships, are what's last? Yep. That's tough. <laughs> so he said Valier was one of the closest places for him to get groceries, and I don't know that I consider Valier to be big enough to. I mean, do they have a grocery? He has a feed and kind of, you know, hardware store, feed store and a feed store. And has, okay. Has a tire shop. It is not very. It's not bigger than Shoto, though, is it? No. No. So how far are you from Shoto? You're only... There's a lumber yard and a hardware store. And Shoto's about... It's about 50 miles. Everything's about 50. Yeah, everything's about 50 miles. But what he's meaning by 50 miles is the people that live in Shoto, Montana, they go to Great Falls oh, to yeah. get their groceries. And so from, from there to here, from Shoto to here is 50 miles. From Shoto to Great Falls is 50 miles. That's actually the closest town that's big. Decent. Yeah. Helena. Yeah. yeah. Helena is about two hours and 20 minutes away drive, and then Great Falls is just under two hours. Oh, okay. Yeah, if your wife wants to go to town, that's where she's got to go. <laughs> Which is actually how we wound up getting a job. Oh, yeah? When I found out the Boone and Crockett Club was looking for a man, they hired a guy. And when he brought his wife out, to show them where they're going. She said not only no, but heck no. No way am I living this far from the from the civilized world and shopping and everything. After they'd done the deal and- so Oh, really? So yeah, he told me how to decline. And so they started the hiring process again. And the ranch, uh, 
committee chairman is a family friend from way back. Known me my whole entire life. Oh, okay. Let's see if I wanted to come up. So, do you guys go to do you go to Costco and stock up on groceries, or do you? Yeah, or Sam's Club and Great Falls. Yeah. And how often do you how often do you have to go for groceries? Um, now that it's just read, not so often. Yeah. Like every two weeks, or? Yeah, well, maybe once a month. Once a month. So you got to really kind of plan. We'll use the local little grocery stores for like the parish, you know, like milk and eggs. Gotcha. And then go go get your your main main haul. Go get the main haul every once a month. And then if everything mothers here and they spread out in that fashion, they miss mother. Right. That calf's gonna come lay down in this corner and he's not gonna try and crawl through the fence. That's the theory anyway. So yeah. So what we're doing right now, what he's saying, mothering, means we're, we're kind of waiting. You kind of wait and let them kind of mill around and hopefully find their calf. So you're kind of watching to see if if the mothers find their calves. And that way, because the calves, when they lose their mother, they will run back to the last place they saw their mother. So if that's way back at the ranch, then they're going to go all the way back there and their mother's going to still be up here. So you're wait, you want to wait for them to mother up before you leave, right? So if you just left, typically, you push them up here and just leave. You have to do it all over again. You're gonna have to do most of it over again because the babies will go that way, then the mothers will go looking for them, so they'll be down there too. The bulls are bulls are coming over the hill. They see the ladies, and they're like, woohoo! So other than other than like just looking at the herd and seeing that they're kind of paired up, like the babies have found their moms. How how else can you tell that they're they're starting to mother up? Well, no, the noise level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when they cook ball, that means they know that their baby is here. Yeah. And the calf knows mom is here. So when they're when the cows are, when you hear a bunch of cows bawling, typically they're being moved or something because they're they're looking for they're calling to their baby or the baby's calling to the mom. So when you hear dead quiet like this, everything's happening. So we'll give it about another ten minutes, and then we'll just turn them through the gate. Should be good. Should be good. Yeah. yeah. They're cows. They are cows. <laughs> <laughs> they try to make make your life a little harder than it has to be, right? God, made them dag. Yep. <laughs> Come here. Hey cows. Hey cows. And bulls. And bulls. Yep. Let's go, cows! Hip, hip, hey! Hey, cows! Hey, hey, cattle! Hip, hey! Hey! Hey, cows! Hip, 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 hip! There they go. <laughs> he was a little bit nervous about that cow running straight at him. Last ones, of course, it's got to be the calves. There he goes. <laughs> no, what's that? Oh, I see, he got you. I didn't realize that, man. I. I've been doing this wrong the whole time. I didn't realize you had to put your finger on your nose before you, or you had to get the gate. 
Now you can hear they're slightly misbothered. Yep, slightly. They're like, they move just a little bit and they're like, oh, hey, where is Joe? <laughs> So after being here for this long, 13 years or whatever, the bears, the, dealing with the grizzly bears don't really seem to change much of what you do. No. You're just more aware. It's like living in snake country. You're aware. Yeah. yeah. Certain things you're, you're not going to go do. <laughs> so you're not going to go poking around the brush with no yeah, gun or okay. something all, not on your horse, right? Yeah, you don't go in the brush stuff up. Yeah. Dogs help when you're in the brush too, I suppose, because oh, yeah. if they'll locate the bear before you ever get there, yeah. well, and so you don't step right on top of it. Dogs and, are so good when we're cattle in the brush too. Yeah. If it wasn't for horses and dogs, I'd probably would do something else with my life. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> Cows are just aggravating. Yeah. <laughs> you like the horses and the dogs and forget the cows, huh? Yeah. The problems with the bear. Uh, people want, want, want. But they don't want the responsibility or accountability for the decision, you know. And when you, like in the ranching world, we we're born into accountability and stewardship mm -hmm. and and responsibility. Yeah, yeah, responsibility. I mean, last night we were out till midnight after putting in a long, hard day, just making sure because our our well wasn't deep enough with the stock that we had in the grills. So we were hauling water to make sure everything had enough to drink, you know. But that's just. You know, it was our decision to put those cattle there for that night, so it's our responsibility to make sure that they're provided for. And that's such a... I mean, in our world, it's just the way we live. It's just as much a part of life as breathing. But our society isn't like that. They, they're they a consumer society. They just buy, 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 want, 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 me, me, me. And, and they don't want to take accountability for their decisions or their choices. They, everybody wants to go out and drive around and see a bear, great, or they want to want to protect wolves, whatever. Um, but they don't take accountability for the the management or the stewardship of those animals. They want to push it up on somebody else. Right. So that's I I you know I hadn't really thought too much about this your line of thought here because but it's very true i mean i've thought about the fact that they're not in the same area as the animals that they're trying to put out here yeah but that's really really is true the personal responsibility goes along with it when when we do something it's usually right here where we are so we understand that if you do this you're going to be responsible for it yeah. right but if you're if you don't live here and you say i just want grizzly bears there because I think it's a good, somebody told me it was a good idea and they believe it makes them feel warm and fuzzy. It makes them feel good, but they're not sitting here dealing with the consequences of that, you know, being, uh, or wolves or whatever, overpopulating an area and dealing and killing a lot of the wildlife or, because that's what they kill a lot of the baby wildlife, especially. So emotion driven passion, mm -hmm. you know, uh, without responsibility, stewardship, or accountability is terrible. Yes. It, it leads to so many problems, and we see it on so many levels in our whole society, but in this world we live in out here, you know. Um, and I, I want bears here. I really do. I, yeah. I hope my great-grandkids are out here riding punch with cows someday, and they still see a grizzly bear. But I want to man I want them managed so that they can be here for a long time. Mismanaged uh, stewardship uh, it never ends well. It no, never does. Well, and and I think a lot of the thing is is numbers. People hear numbers of like, oh, there's 700 bears in this in this region, and there's a thousand bears in that region. It doesn't sound like a whole lot anyway. But when you're talking about a predator like bears or wolves, they, you can't really sustain a super large population of them. And the, they're not like elk. They can't, they don't eat grass. So bears will eat some grass. So they're, yeah, they're, they're kind of omnivorish. They're in between. Yeah. Yes. They'll eat a lot of grain. They'll eat a lot of grass. But the wolf thing. Yeah, the wolf thing just as meat. You know, everybody wants both. Yeah. Everybody loves the lions, love the wolves, but they love mule deer. Well, you can't have, you can't have mass numbers of both. No. 
Exactly. One lion will eat a deer every week. So in one year's time, they'll eat over 50 deer. Or at least kill a deer every week. Sometimes they don't even eat them, but the wolves are the ones that will kill them and just leave them. Yeah. I can't tell you how many carcass, deer carcasses we find out here where they'll kill a deer and they'll, they'll tear the guts apart, eat the fetus out of the doe, and then right. leave it. Hmm. You know, and, and walk off. And they'll do the same thing with our livestock. They'll kill a calf, drag the guts out, eat a lot of the guts, and you, that's, you'll come back, that's what you'll find. You know, at least a bear will polish it off. And a lion, it'll polish it off. Yeah. We'll if, just kill it. Kill it. If, if a, bear, a bear, if it doesn't eat it all at once, it'll exactly. bury the thing and then come back to it. And he'll pee just stick. Over it. Yeah, pee all over it. You and he'll stick smell. around there. You he'll stick around. Or you can see it. Yeah. And he'll finish it off. If, uh, he'll just keep eating on that until it's gone. But some of these other animals he's saying don't do that. And I, you know, I don't even mind the wolf, but manage. And wolves are a tough, tough, tough thing. The only the reason that they really w did well in the West is because they had such a massive food source. Buffalo, There's buffalo, buffalo. And, and elk all over the all over the prairies too. There was elk and buffalo were massive. They were just everywhere. Yeah. So now you have none of that. So they're basically what cattle did is they took the place of the buffalo, but. We eat cattle, and not only do we eat cattle, people make their living right. with cattle. So as soon as you start killing heaven cattle, forbid we make our living. heaven forbid you barely make enough money to make it, and you keep something like this area pristine yeah. by, by the simple fact that you're making a living, yeah. right? Right. But heaven forbid that was the case, that you run cattle on something. But anyway, that now makes the wolf a very difficult animal to deal with in the West because they do not have that food source. Their only food source really is elk and deer, but, and, and they decimate elk pretty quickly in an area when they get... They don't really hit a moose population as well. And moose population. I don't know why, but they do really hit moose bad. So just when you hear about numbers, when you're, you know, and that doesn't take very many wolves because they, they, you know, a wolf pack will, heck, they'll cover a 50 mile square area. So when you just hear numbers from back east or some organization or something throwing out a bunch of numbers, it really doesn't tell you the story of what's going on at all until you actually understand and have to live in the middle of it. It's always it's always so refreshing to talk to people who are grateful and understand being content with what they have. Because when, when you're ranching, there's a lot of things that you do without. So ranching is a fantastic way of life. And it is something that I, I'm not going to say that, uh, man, you know, man, it's too bad you have to be a rancher. But it, it is, it, you have to do without a lot. You have to do with the distance between you and normal shopping, you have to drive a long ways to go to school, things like that. And so to be content with that, you got to be a, a specific kind of person, not only to love this stuff, but just be really understand contentment. And, and these guys really do. And that makes it so much more fun or so much fun to ride with them and talk with them and do things with them. So I had a fantastic day today. Um, make sure you leave some, your comments down below and uh, we'll see you in the next time. God bless.